Hey folks, welcome to part eight of the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Exam Series. Our first question is going to be, which method is not a way to enhance dashboard performance in Tableau? So as you know, there's a lot of different best practices that you can employ. Which of the ones listed here are not one of those ways? Would you use higher level of detail, reduce the use of filters, increase the use of complex calculations, or would you simplify the visualization? So which one of these would not enhance dashboard performance? In other words, which of these would probably make the dashboard slower instead of faster? And there's a number of different resources you can use. Uh, for instance, we can use a Tableau documentation, which I have over here, uh, open over here. It talks about optimizing workbook performance. It's a really good article, I'll leave it down below. And there's a number of different tips that you could follow to make your dashboard run faster. In addition, one thing I do wanna point out, if you go into Tableau, um, you can actually, if you go over server, you can run the optimizer, which in real time, it's gonna tell you all the different best practices that your workbook does or does not employ. So for example, over here, it tells me that I have a bunch of unused fields. And if that's the case, typically you should be hiding those fields so the workbook doesn't bring them in. And yeah, it'll, it'll kind of go through this list of different opportunities that you could take or you haven't taken and really kind of allow you to understand what exactly you need to do to make sure your workbook is up to par in terms of performance. So be sure to check that feature out if you haven't already. But again, uh, just thinking logically and you know, alongside also kind of going through these different tips, um, one of the things using higher level of detail, obviously that is a way to optimize uh, performance. In fact, if you look over here, it says, don't work with data you don't need both in terms of the fields you reference, in other words, the, the columns that you're bringing in, um, but also the granularity of the records, right? If you're not going into the most granular, granular levels, if you really just wanna see things in an aggregated way, why bring those additional uh, rows in? Maybe you can aggregate uh, before the fact, whether it's at the data source or the extract level, um, and then allow that to you know, flow into your workbook. Um, so using higher level of detail is actually gonna make your dashboard faster, so that's not gonna be the correct solution. How about reducing the use of filters? That's a tricky one. Typically we're told to use filters to help restrict the amount of data that's coming in as it relates to rows, maybe you have a particular criteria. And yes, generally speaking, that does help speed up workbook performance. However, if you get too crazy with filters, let's say you have 20, 20, 20, 30 different filters on a worksheet, that's actually gonna hinder performance because that's a lot of decisions that Tableau then has to make. And for that reason, reducing the use of filters can typically be seen as a way to, in fact, enhance performance. So that's not gonna be one of the correct solutions, surprisingly. Um, third option is increasing the use of complex calculations. So um, again, if you reference uh, the documentation over here, and there's actually you know different articles that you can access. And one talks about creating efficient calculations. And we did talk about this in the past. So something like LOD expressions, right? That's a lot of complexity. It can actually hinder performance of a workbook. If you have like a crazy uh, nest, nested if statement, that can hinder performance. And that's why you might wanna instead use something like a case statement. So the gist of it is if you are increasing the use of complex calculations, that is gonna hinder your Tableau performance. It's not gonna allow it to be optimized. So that's probably uh, the correct solution here. Last option is simplifying visualizations. Obviously, if you have you know a reduced number of marks, limited number of marks, or a simple visualization, that's certainly one way to enhance dashboard for performance as well. So that's not gonna be the correct solution. The only correct solution here will be the third option because increasing the use of complex calculations is certainly not a way to enhance performance in Tableau. By the way, if you do enjoy videos like this, consider liking the video and subscribing for more content just like this. Next question. True or false Tableau's data interpreter can clean and reshape messy data, which is sourced from SQL databases. Now we did in a prior video talk about how, you know, when you're talking about cleaning or prepping data, you typically can really only use what's known as Tableau Prep Builder. But there's also a feature in Tableau that you can actually access um, from the data source tab. It's really just a checkbox, right? On the, on the left that you'll see here um, as soon as it loads. Um, but checking this box, it can really help you kind of clean um, some of the data and according to the Tableau documentation, particularly for you know Excel sheets, 
CSV files, PDF files, or Google Sheets, okay? Tableau's data interpreter can clean and reshape messy data sourced from SQL databases. That's actually gonna be false because again, referring to the documentation here, all the way at the bottom, it'll tell you when the data interpreter is not available, right? So specifically, there are some dirt, some type of data sources that are not supported because the uh, data interpreter only works for Microsoft Excel, CSV, PDF, and Google Sheet as we just uh, discussed. What does that mean? So if you're ac actually connected to a SQL data source like a SQL Server database or Teradata or Oracle, what have you, it's actually not gonna work. It's not gonna be an option. So that's why it's false. Next question. The pages shelf allows which of the following? And you can select multiple correct options here. So what is the pages shelf? And we did talk about this in a recent video. Is it a way to page through SQL records? Like maybe I have, 100 records and I want to get the first 10, then the next 10, then is that what that is for, for paging through SQL records? Is it um, for a way, does it enable the ability to jump to a specific page? Does it enable the ability to manually iterate through pages? So page one, page two, page three. Or does it offer a way to automatically iterate through pages, right? Maybe it just does it for you. Maybe it just kind of on automation just increments page one, page two, page three without you having to click anything? Or is it gonna be the last option? Is it a way to size the dashboard dimensions based on devices? So maybe you're you know looking at something from a tablet and you wanna be able to specify the dimensions. Is that what the pages shelf is for? So uh, again, where's the pages shelf? It's gonna be right here. So when you have a, when you have a sheet open on the top left, as you can see here, that's where the pages would be. And I think we covered this in a recent video, but let's just do it real quick since we're here, uh, here already. So let's say I have, uh, you know, sum of sales by category, and I want to be able to iterate through a period of time so I can actually drag my order date into pages. And maybe I want this to be month and year, right? Um, what are the different options that I can do? Can I, you know, just explicitly go to a specific page like May 2020? Yes, I can. And what does that do, by the way? What does that even do? Well, what it does, it, it almost acts like a filter, but um, it helps you iterate through whatever you're paging on. So all, all I'm doing here is looking at some of sales by category, but I can look at it on a combination of month and year basis. So that's January 2019, and now that's February 2019, and now that's March, April, May. And you notice the visualization here changing as well because that's reflecting what page you are on. Now, going back to the question, does it help page through SQL records? No, we're not talking about SQL records. Does it help jump to a specific page? Can I just jump from September 2019 to September 2020? Yes, I can. Um, how about the third option? Can I iterate through the pages manually? So can I, you know, just kind of go going like this? Can I increment through like November 2022, December, January, February? Yes, it does allow me to do that. Now, what is the, uh, the fourth option over here? Can I do the same thing automatically if I want to iterate through all the way from the beginning through the end automatically without clicking every single time? Can I do that? So again, Let's go back here. Let's set this to the earliest date, which is January 2019. And you'll notice we have like a, like a stop and then we have like a play button. What does that do? If I just, if I click play and I have my hands over here, so you know, I'm not clicking, what is that doing? It's iterating through. Notice my hands are here, right? All I did was click play and now it's iterating through all of those pages. So what, the, what does that mean? That means the, um, the fourth option here is also correct. So the second, third, and fourth options so far are correct. How about the last option is the pages shelf what allows you to you know, set the size of the dashboard dimensions. Um, no, if you, you know, if you right click or whatever, that's not even remotely an option. In fact, if you wanted to do that, that would be when you go into dashboard, in the dashboard um, pane, that's where you would set the size. So, size. so the only correct solutions here are gonna be the second, third, and fourth options. Next question, which option is not a current valid um, Tableau file type? I noticed a typo there, so ignore that. Let's pretend that A isn't there. Which option is not a current valid Tableau file type? Is it gonna be .twbx, .twb, .hyper, 
.tde or .tbm. This might be a little bit of a trick question because I'm sure a lot of you haven't seen uh, one or more of these specific file types, but I can assure you that one does exist and the other one probably does not. Now let's see what I mean. So let's go to the Tableau documentation because that's definitely where you're gonna want to uh, help prepare for the exam. But first thing you'll see is a workbook. So what is .twb? That is a Tableau workbook file. No data attached, just your, you know, your sheets, your dashboards, your visualizations, that kind of thing. No actual data, right? You have to be connected uh, to get that data. How about, what's the next option here? TBM, okay, that is actually a Tableau bookmark file. That's the .tbm extension. So that's also um, an actual valid uh, extension. How about TWBX, right? So that's, again, that's similar to TWB. That's actually a Tableau workbook file with the data attached. So you actually have data within the workbook and you're able to work offline because everything is right there. You don't have to connect to like an external data source and everything else in terms of even, you know, images or different assets, all of that is packaged together in that workbook for you to access. So that's the difference between the TWB and TWBX, but both of them are uh, valid file types. Uh, what's next here? So hyper. Hyper, so that the Tableau extract files have a .hyper extension. So that's also a valid file type. How about .tde? If you look over here, there's no .tde. And a lot of you might be confused because you might have seen it before. And the reason why is it's actually deprecated. So if that comes up on the exam, it's not actually uh, a valid file type anymore. It was dis uh, discontinued, as you could see here, in the beginning of 2023. Um, and you know, the dot hyper was actually introduced in 2018. So that's the reason why. Uh, and as such, the fourth option here is going to be the correct option here because that's the only one on this list that is no longer a valid uh, Tableau file type. Quick pause. If you like these videos, but you're serious about acing the Tableau desktop specialist practice exam or certification, I've got news for you. Check out the link in the description if you're interested in practicing with an even more realistic set of practice exam questions. There are at least five different practice exams, 45 questions each, with the proper distribution of exam topic areas. You'll know exactly which questions you got right or wrong and what the correct solutions were. Now, there are a limited number of spots available, so be sure to take advantage of the limited time offer because as you know practice makes perfect and that's her up thank you guys so much for watching hope you enjoyed the video be sure to like if you haven't already and subscribe if you haven't already and of course as always i will see you on the next one thank you for watching yeah.